In today's book review, we have Numerology, A Beginner's Guide to Numbers. So if you don't already understand everything in the universe, at the end of the day, it all goes down to numbers, whether that be a square, a triangle, circle, all the shapes work perfect with mathematics. That's why we love straight lines, things that are coherent, things that are positive, they feel good, but when things are out of order and the numbers don't align, feels disharmonious, it's negative, and you don't like it. And that's why sometimes you click with other people because they're on the same wavelength as you. They're on the same exact number. So when you break it down at the end of the day, it all has to do with the Tesla quote, frequency, energy, and vibration. So in numerology, we work with the belief that your soul chooses the day that you were born, giving you the gifts, tools, and lessons you need to fulfill your destiny, aka talents, gifts, higher purpose, special talent that has a big impact on your life. Most of the time you're able to figure this out naturally over time about what you like. It should come naturally. You shouldn't even have to try. There's the core big five numbers that you need in your life. One has to do with your birthday and your name, and then you can add up all the different things. It'll show you different charts in this book because it would be impossible for me to write all of it down and then it would be a, such a long video. So calculating your birthday, let's say for example, you were born on the second or the 15th, your number would be two, born on the second, you just write two. If we were born on the 15th, you add up one plus five and it would equal six. And that is your birthday number. So you add and reduce until you get a single digit called the root number where the magic happens in Pythagorean theorem neurology. If your birthday is on the 11th, 22nd or 29th, you add up, there are something called mastery numbers where if it's one, one, it's a mastery number and it enhances something greater and has more specific details for you, that's good. Same with two, two and three, three. Master numbers are a blessing and a curse. Those born with master numbers are given extra gifts and talents, which come with harder lessons and bigger expectations. The obstacles you must overcome are greater with those than your birthday. From a capability perspective, two people with master numbers will have an instant understanding of one another on a deeper vibrational level. Then we have something called karmic debt in this, which is the numbers are 13, 14, 16, and 19, because when you reduce a number, let's say you reduce 13 down to a single digit, it'll be 13 slash four. When you have any of the numbers, 13, four, 14, five, 16, seven, and 19, one pop up in your chart, that is a karmic debt debt in the book it goes over which karmic debt means and that can always change in time with when you were born specific days months years of your life it'll you'll have a karmic debt and you'll have to you know fulfill it those are basically just simple lessons so let's say for example someone born october 12 2012 a 10th month you would do one plus zero equals one plus 16 plus 2012 you'd reduce it down to one plus 16 seven plus five equals 13 four that is your life path number so your life path number is adding up the month the year and the day your birthday number is just your simple day and the life path and I'll give you an example of what a birthday number exactly would be. So mine is you are responsible and family oriented. You also love animals, loyalty, perfectionism, and thoughtfulness and are all parts of your nature, although you tend to meddle in affairs that are not yours, and you will learn the lessons of surviving, betrayal, and minding your own business. I feel like minding your own business, that's a really funny one, and that was day number six for me. And then we have your life path number. So mine equals out to 11.2, and I'll give you an example of this one. This number is the most intuitive and you are ahead of your time and the world might not be ready for what you have to offer. Because of this, the 11s often don't immediately reap the rewards of their pioneering hard work. And because of their pioneering spirit, 11 twos make fantastic motivational speakers, spiritual leaders, TV hosts, designers, media personalities. The 11 twos love to be in a relationship, especially especially a peaceful and harmonious one. They will bring their gentle in nature and spiritual quality to any relationship because they feel so deeply that this can lead to depression, anxiety, and serious allergies. The unique vibration of one one makes you prone to health issues of both one and two. If you can already tell, it's like speaking and being a spiritual person. That's something that I'm already doing now. And it goes over this in numerology, astrology, and they all kind of intertwine and do things together. So each per, there's a million different definitions for each one. I just wanted to give you an example of what it was for me. So if you get the book, then you can interpret your life. Then we have a birth name that uncovers your destiny, your soul, your personality, and maturity numbers. Full name on your birth certificate. So let's say, for example, my name's Alex, but ever, my birth certificate is Alexander. So we're gonna write out your full name. Add each name to the individually and then add it up just like the month, day, and the year. So let's say, for example, your name is Alex. You in the book, it shows you exactly what letters add up to which numbers. And then you take those of the first name and then you add it to the second and then you add it to the third.
And then we have our destiny number, our highest potential that you spend lifetime trying to reach and fulfill goals to career, family, and the person you want to be and it explains each one. So my destiny number was number 11, I'm another mastery number again. Another example is the master intuitive. This number has a potent expression, extremely sensitive, intuitive, and aware. You execute a powerful and refined, elegant presence. You experience divine guidance and your natural leadership abilities. It means you can easily attract a following or fame. You make decisions using an elusive combination of logic, intuition, and emotion. You've always known you are different and with the time, you will fully embrace your special gifts to awaken and enlighten others. When living in your shadow, you can be manipulative and use your power for morally questionable endeavors, and you can have a hard time separating your imagination from reality. You often feel like no one can live up to your high expectations. Then you have your soul number rules decisions made by the heart. It reveals your private self that are those most closely due to you. And these are, again, these are simply adding up the different numbers of your name. So mine is number three. And for example, the soul number three, the flirt, enchanting and flirty. The soul number three makes other people laugh and feel special with their sparkling personality. You tend to follow the fun and struggle with a grass is always greener mentality, which can cause you to be non-committal in a relationship. And you may hide your true emotions with humor and excessive talking. If you're not happy, others will know by your words, which can be like a knife intended to hurt. Your lesson is always to give others in recognition that they deserve and to not take the people for granted and to make them feel like your sidekick. So your personality number is the total sum of the consonants in your full name. So let's say, for example, there's your destiny number, which has to do with the verbs in your name or the, you know, the things where it's like O and E, and then you add them up on top, you add them all together, and that's the destiny number. And then you take the ones that are constants below, and that is your personality number. So my personality number is number eight, strong and impressive, influential, powerful, ambitious, authoritative, business-minded, visionary, confident, refined, ruthless, greedy, and conceited and controlling. Then karmic lessons, which if you have missing letters in your name, and it'll tell you exactly which lesson you'll have as well. Lesson number eight, mine is missing H, Q, and Z in my name. Your lesson is managing money, both through abundance and lack of wealth. You will learn to handle your resources better and tolerate authoritative figures and acceptance of guidance from others. So we have karmic debt and then we have karmic lessons and those are the both different things for that. Then we have something called the concords in numerology. Those are three unique concords, which are triads. The numbers that are naturally together, like 157, 248, and 369. When you put it out on a chart where it's like just like tic tac toe, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they all add up to make a great number that do different things that work with specific energy centers of the body that focus on, you know things like that. They predict how well you will get along with others, relationships, friendships, reduce your birthday or life path number to get it. Mine is 112, which is my mastery number and my life path. And then you add up your birthday, you combine those two together. So maturity number is your life path plus destiny number equals maturity. So mine is again, one, one plus one, one, and that equals four. Your maturity number, for example, for mine, you will find yourself becoming more of a planner and more practical and organized. Guard against becoming uptight and flexible and too opinionated and remember to make time for fun. Then we have something called the attitude number, which is a month in the day you were born. Mine is 02 plus 15, 2 plus 6 equals 8. My attitude number 8 is born to lead and when balanced, this number is unstoppable. With desires and dedication to spare it, your dreams are big, which often sets you up for disappointment and you project confidence and work to maintain a successful image. At times, tactless and opinionated, you despise time wasters. Time is money after all and can provide the stability, security, and freedom you desire. If you find yourself with a lack of resource or control, you can adopt a defeatist attitude and get angry. Karma come back, comes back to you quickly and bad. And the next thing we have is cycles of the year. So you can start predicting the future and know what's going to happen in the days, the months, and the year. So the current personal year right now is 2023. 2 plus 2 plus 3 equals 7. And then you have to add your attitude number and you will find the rhythm of life, possibilities and perspectives of your future. So for that number is 7, you take the year or the personal year right now, which is 7, and then you add your attitude number, which you got from the other formula, and then you'll have your personal year. So right now, mine, you do 7 plus 8, the personal year plus the 
added to number and it is 15, one plus five equals six. And that is family and responsibility is that whole year you're in. So you can really dial it down to literally, like I said, the year, the month and the day and you, all the formulas are in the book, which you're gonna need in order to do it. And then we have the attitude problem. Take your number and a friend or business partner's attitude number. You take the bigger one, you minus the small one, and then you can find in the book exactly if you guys, what your problems will be, if it'll be harmonious. And you can do this for many different aspects of the life, which is amazing. Then we have the month cycle, one through nine, to calculate your current personal year plus your month. You would do six plus 10 equals 16, and then one plus six equals seven. That's a karmic debt for me. So the month cycle, you would take that personal year, which you had the formula before, and then you do the current month or whatever month it is now. So say for example, I just did this one yesterday and we are month number 10 of October. You do that plus the current year and then you get that. Personal month number seven, become an expert on something, investigate and research. Self-care is important now and you may feel reclusive. And the more you go with the flow with this stuff, it's like you're gonna be able to live life way more smoothly and your awareness is gonna be on that next level. The magic of October, and it happens to be October this month, Whatever you do will stick for the rest of the year, the next year, setting the tone. Pay attention to the unexpected and unplanned events. Big for me, follow my intuition, moving out the crib. Those are two huge things for me, which I'm doing now. And that's in the month of October, and I'll carry on to the next one. Be equally diligent about what you do not want as well. Fill October with what you love and set clear intentions. So for next year, I'm definitely gonna go all out in October because that's a year that's gonna, or a month that's gonna matter the most to set the tone. Some months and years will be more harmonious and disharmonious than others, the balance of life. Your personal day, you take the personal month plus the calendar day. For me, it was yesterday, seven plus 24, October 24th. It was 13 over four, that's a karmic debt. Personal day number four, you get organized, focus on your health, guard against being rigid, upside and controlling, don't procrastinate, take care of the details to move closer towards your goal and follow the rules of the consequences. Then we have something called arithmacy. It's a study of the divination through numbers. So then we have something called a birth chart where it looks like tic-tac-toe. So you have your birth chart. So just like I said before, uh, tic-tac-toe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you take, for example, mine's February 15, 2001, my birthday. So I put in that there's two ones. There's two twos and there's a five and then I have three zeros. All the zeros in the chart means I have a lot of uh, karma to take care of. And then whatever the number one in the book, it says what it means, two and then five. And then if you have numbers that are in a line like tic-tac-toe, it's called an arrow and that'll enhance your life in a certain way. Empty squares refer back to the significance of each number when it comes to these lessons. You will encounter similar struggles and challenges again and again until you master these lessons. The zeros represent unresolved karma debt from previous incarnations. The more zeros, the more debt you have. You must be paid in this lifetime if you don't want it to come onto the next. So there's rows, columns, and diagonals that you can make the arrows. Each number one through nine has its own trait, again, labeled in the book. So in the top row, we have the mental plane, three, six, nine. The middle row is the soul emotional plane 258 and the bottom row the physical plane is 147 the arrows having three numbers in a row a tic-tac-toe vertical horizontal diagonal having a complete line is like a superpower gift in that area arrows of weakness are missing a complete line cause specific challenges Am I missing 369, arrow of poor memory, forgetfulness, poor concentration, that's something that I have, lack of sympathy, disinterest, avoidance and responsibility. Then I also have the arrow of hesitation, 789, procrastination, laziness, and lack of faith, disorganization. Then you can also use your name for your chart gives that richer information than the birth chart. So for me, I have a pretty long name and I have a bunch of ones, bunch of fives, bunch of nines, and it goes like this. So intensities uh, for one, the number one, Four or more, and it'll tell you if you have blank, if you have two ones, three ones, four ones, it'll tell you exactly what it means. So for me, intensity, I have four ones, and the more ones for that one, you will be considered strong and independent and will stand out from the crowd. Intensity number two, I only had one, and it said this will make you considerate, willing to help others, and sensitive to others as well. Intensity for three, I had three threes, which meant boastful, artistic, gifted with words, a little scattered, you may have trouble focusing. I had two fours, it said, practicality, ability to see things through, and it goes over the other ones as well. And if you're missing a number, it'll tell you what that means as well. And then we have your first name arrow, or I have one arrow that goes through 159 and it's a diagonal, and I have it in the first name, last name, 
and middle name. Determination, persistence, willpower, drive, ability to overcome adversity. People come into your life for a reason, season, or a lifetime. Romantic and significant others, heartfelt, emotional, soulful, romantic connections. You want to make sure that your life path and soul numbers are harmonious. So then you can see you in business partners, or in any other things like friendships or romantic, you can not only, you can just put your charts together and see what different factors work with that. So then we have soul stress numbers. Take the larger number of someone, you and someone else, and then minus the smaller one, and then it'll tell you in the book exactly how that will work. Pet numerology, it also works with pets. Vibration, enhancing intuition. You can also use tarot, astrology, and crystal connections, and they all intertwine and work together. These practices work harmoniously and complement one another, providing further insights, and they rarely contradict one another. I was big into the astrology, and that seemed, it all seems to go together very, very well. And then we have, there's nine life path numbers and there's 12 zodiac signs, make it 108 possible combinations. You see the number 108 so many times everywhere in life and numerology. Movies, TV shows, books, clues and characters, dialogue plots, addresses, fictional numbers, scribbled on notes and scenes of movies, phone numbers, addresses, addresses, license plate, receipts, account numbers, seat numbers, plane tickets, hotel rooms, contractors and documents. You can start to literally see numerology everywhere and start to plan out things in advance and know exactly what to do. And you can seek out certain numerical attributes for certain roles, such as one, you want someone who has like, I'll say, for example, one life path for what they're doing to you. So natural healing hands, you want a massage therapist that has a number one. For a four, love systems and follow rules, you would want an accountant that does that. Or six, rules, education, learning, you would want someone who's a teacher for that role. So that is the book of numerology. You're going to need it to chart out every single piece of information and you can learn so much from it. I was big into all this spiritual stuff for so long and after five years, I changed my music to a certain frequency to do something different. But this is my first time getting into this and I highly suggest it. You can learn a lot from it. Other than that, have a good day and peace out.